Now for young Widow Brown. Joyce Turner, the wife of Dr. Peter Turner, the man Evan Brown loves, was recently injured in an auto accident and as a result has lapsed into a tragic mental condition which makes her even more dependent on Peter. And Evan knows it is futile to hope for a day when Peter is free from the bonds of a loveless marriage. Yesterday, Dr. Richard Douglas came to see Evan to ask her advice on whether or not he ought to marry Maybell Tyson. But just as he was about to confide something even more important, Peter appeared to take Evan to the depot to meet Herbert Temple, Evan's middle-aged and long-time admirer, who was returning from a world cruise. Now, the following evening, in Evan's tea room, we find her little daughter, Janie, setting a festive table as Millie Baxter, the blind mountain girl, approaches. Janie, we're here. Prince and I are here. Oh, hello, Millie. Oh, goody. Where's Yvonne? Oh, she had a little headache and said if she'd lie down for a spell, she'd get over it, so... Prince just brought me over. Oh, I wish I had such a nice dog, Millie. But you don't need one. You can see, Janie. Mmm, it smells powerful nice in here. Like turkey or, or Thanksgiving dinner. It's almost the same thing, Millie. What you doing? Mommy put two tables together to make one long table. She's got her best tablecloth out, and I'm setting the table with her own best dishes and silverware. Oh, it's sure enough good of your mommy to invite me to the party, Janie. Well, you're my best friend, Millie. Gosh, Mommy's real happy because Herbert Temple is back from his long trip. He's going to be guest of honor at Mommy's party. Who else is invited? Oh, Peter and Uncle Josh and Yvonne and Mark and me, of course. Dr. Douglas, too? No. Mommy said he never knew Uncle Herbert, so that's why she didn't invite him. Oh, Janie, you know what I heard? What? You sit down, Millie, and I'll go right on setting the table. Well, Mariah Hawkins was in the drugstore... And I heard her saying that Dr. Douglas is planning to get hitched up with Maybelle Tyson. Do you think it's so? I don't know, Millie. If I was Dr. Douglas, I wouldn't want to marry Maybelle Tyson, even if her folks do have a lot of money. Me either. She acts awful sweet all the time, but, but I don't think she means it. But she could be real mean. Mommy says if Maybelle doesn't get away about every little thing, she pouts, just like Mark. Hello, Uncle Herbert. Hello, oh, it's Janie. Mr. Temple, Millie. Well, how's Mother's little helper? Oh, just fine. Here, let me take your hat and coat. Thank you. Mommy said I should be hostess and make everyone feel at home, because she's helping in the kitchen. Well, your mother couldn't have a better hostess. Well, who's your little friend, Janie? Oh, don't you know Millie Baxter? How do you do, Millie? Howdy, Mr. Temple. Don't you want to shake hands with me? Oh, I, I didn't know you'd offered your hand. You, you see, I'm blind. Oh, I'm sorry. You take the big chair in front of the fireplace, please, Uncle Herbert. Yes, thank you, Janie. Well, your mother's done wonders with this little tea room. It's the coziest spot I know. Oh, we don't have much business anymore, though. Mommy says all the city folks have gone back to town. Yes, and Simpsonville folks don't eat out much, I know. Oh, Peter eats here regularly, and so does Dr. Douglas. Oh, here he comes now. Hello, Janie. Well, it looks like we're having a party. Oh, yes, Dr. Douglas. How are you, Millie? I reckon I'm fine. I've come to talk to your mother, Janie. Is she here? Yes, she's in the kitchen. I'll tell her you're here. Oh, Dr. Douglas, this is Mr. Temple. He just got back from traveling all around the world. How do you do, Mr. Temple? No, you didn't, Dr. Douglas. Were you in Singapore, Mr. Temple? Why, uh, no. Does Singapore interest you, Millie? Well, I, I just like the sound of the name. I think I'd like to go there because the name sounds so pretty. Singapore. Did your trip make you all well again, Uncle Herbert? Oh, it did me a lot of good, I'm sure, Janie. Uh, a lot of good. You haven't been well, Miss Temple. Well, Peter's my doctor and he wants to make an invalid of me, but I just tell him there's nothing wrong with me and here I am, hale and hearty. You don't look so good, Uncle Herbert. You look lots older. And your hair is mostly gray now. Well, now, that's a nice thing to say. Guess I'll have to change my brand of soap to look younger, I mean. Uncle Herbert, sometimes it seems like you must have a pain, like in your heart, because you act kind of funny, like you're hurt, but you didn't want to show it. Do you hurt sometimes? Oh, my, my, what big eyes you have for such a little girl. Now, run along, tell your mother she has company. Didn't you hear Dr. Douglas say he wants to speak to her? Yes, Uncle Herbert. I'll tell her right away. 
Won't you sit down, Dr. Douglas? Thank you. If, if you all will excuse me, I, I reckon maybe Prince and I can help in the kitchen. Certainly, Millie. Take me to Mrs. Brown, Prince. You've known Mrs. Brown a, a long time, Mr. Temple. Yes, so long that folks are beginning to say maybe after a while she'll marry me if only to get rid of me. Oh. After a while, Ellen will probably say yes to me when I propose just to break the monotony. Then you've come back to marry Ellen. That's been my dream for many, many years, but I don't wonder that Ellen has always turned me down. She's young, and I'm not a young man anymore. And yet perhaps I could take some of the burdens off those shoulders of hers. It's hard for a young widow with two children to get along, especially in a small town. Yes, that's what I try to tell Ellen. I see her fighting her way, barely able to make ends meet on her little income, always needing more money to buy clothes and books for the children, and then I think of myself... Alone in that big house with more money than I'll ever spend on myself. And it makes me feel almost criminally selfish. I understand. Janie tells me you're new to Simpsonville. Yes, I've just started to practice. Ellen has been very helpful ever since I came to town. Are you married, Doctor? No. Well, I suppose you'll be marrying one of our local girls someday. Yes, perhaps. I hope you'll be as lucky as I am. I mean, say, I hope you'll find a girl as lovely as Ellen. Oh, here I am talking as though I'm sure that she'll have me. I guess, though, that I've always thought that someday she would, if I just waited long enough. I don't expect to be as lucky as you, Mr. Temple. I don't think there's another girl in Simpsonville quite like Ellen. You got the table all set, Janie? Yes, Mommy. I put the roses on for a centerpiece, like you said. Good. Oh, my, the table looks very nice, dear. Hello, Herbert. Hello, Ellen. Richard, I'm Hello, sorry Ellen. not to be a better hostess, but Janie tells me that she's taken over for me. You couldn't have a better proxy, Ellen. <laughs> Uncle Herbert, Mark is in the back room, and he just caught the cutest little baby rabbit. Do you want to see it? Well, I wouldn't miss it. You too, Dr. Douglas? No, thank you, Janie. Oh, come on, Uncle Herbert. All right, I'm coming. Janie said you wanted to talk to me, Richard. I'm a bit rushed now. You see, we're, we're having a party in honor of Herbert. Won't you stay? Perhaps we can talk afterwards. Well, thank you, Helen. I, I'm sorry, but I can't stay. I have a patient I must look after. Oh, I'm sorry. Was it urgent what you wanted to talk over with me? I remember now that yesterday you said you had something important to tell me. Then I had to rush off to the station to meet Herbert, and I'm now... I'm glad for you, Ellen, that, that Mr. Temple is back. Yes, isn't it wonderful? What I wanted to tell you is I'm going to get married. Oh, how nice. To Maybelle Tyson, if she will still have me. Well, Richard, my congratulations. Thank you. I hope you'll be very happy. It seems to be the best thing for me. Well, I, I guess I'll have to be getting back to the office now. Well, thank you for coming in to bring me the news. Not at all. Good night, Ellen. Good night, Richard. Lots of luck. Mommy, can Mark bring the baby rabbit into the dining room? Indeed he cannot. Mommy says you can't bring it in, Mark. Well, we've seen the rabbit. That's all taken care of. <laughs> oh, are you leaving, Dr. Douglas? I'm afraid I must. Glad to have met you, Mr. Temple. Good night. Glad to have met you. Good night, Dr. Douglas. Richard came to tell me that he's going to be married. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. To Maybelle Tyson. You know her. She's very pretty. She's pretty, yes, but uh, you know the old one about beauty being only skin deep? She'll make him a good wife, I hope. He's such a fine, sensitive boy be too bad if he were to make the wrong sort of marriage. Well, I asked him before if he were going to get married. He didn't uh, tell me anything about Mabel Tyson. Didn't he? No. Must have made up his mind very quickly. Perhaps. Or, or perhaps he wanted me to be the first to know. Yes. Well, he doesn't seem very happy for a young chap about to embark on life's greatest adventure. At least he, he doesn't seem so to me. Not as happy as I'd be, Ellen, if you told me at last you were willing to marry me. Herbert, after the way I've treated you, I never thought you'd ask me again. Well, why do you think I came back, my dear? Because you were tired of traveling. Your health was better. It, it is better, isn't it, Herbert? Really better, I mean. Oh, yes. Yes, much better. I, I came back because I couldn't bear to be away from you any longer, Ellen, and I, I hope perhaps absence would make the heart grow fonder. You always try to seem happy, Herbert. Yet, underneath, I... I feel you're sad. It's because you're so thoughtful of me. You don't think of yourself, I guess. I am sad underneath, Ellen, and I always will be. Until the day you'll say you'll be my wife. You deserve to be happy. No one deserves it more. 
Is this the day I've waited for so long, my dear? You will say yes, won't you? Don't tell me I've waited so long in vain. <laughs> <laughs> 